Hello and welcome to this Dungeon Fog tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the tokens options within Dungeon Fog. Now the token options can be found here. Number five, place a token on the list. I'm going to left click on that and it opens up some interesting options with regards to tokens that we can place within Dungeon Fog. In case you didn't know, Dungeon Fog actually has a remote viewing option which allows you to share your map with your players and uh, it gives you a second view basically. You get to see one view, your players get to see the other, and so tokens can be used to uh, indicate where certain things are on your map and actually move them around in real time if you so choose. But how do we set up tokens? Well, tokens are fairly straightforward. Every token can be named, so uh, let's name this particular token Jeff. Hello Jeff. So the token is now Jeff. Any name that we type in here will appear underneath the token. So if I move my cursor over my board, we can see here immediately that we could add Jeff the monster to this uh, sort of arena dungeon that I created quickly. So if I left click, I create Jeff. But Jeff's got a rather plain border and a very plain background, and maybe we don't want Jeff to look like this sort of zombie mummy thing. Now, uh, how do we change those? What do those mean? Well, we'll get there. But first, let's look at the size. So I'm going to get uh, Jeff here. I'm going to select my select tool and I'm going to select Jeff. It brings up the same information as before, but now we're accessing the actual Jeff token. And uh, I've got some size options here. Size option one means that the token will fit into one grid space on your map. If I change that to two, Jeff is now a giant sized monster and is capable of moving around the map and uh, causing terror to all of our heroes. Let's default him back to one though. So Jeff is on one. There we go. He is moving around. Now, we don't particularly like the border that Jeff has got. It doesn't make him pop out of that map. So we're going to go and change that. So with Jeff selected, I can now select my border. Select the texture for border, and as with all of the texture options within Dungeon Fog, I can control and manipulate everything I so choose. So I can give him a sanded border if I like. Now, my personal preference when it comes to this sort of thing is to actually switch over to the color tab and select a solid color for uh, my creatures. Now, I'm, I'm making my monsters usually some sort of red or vibrant color. If I, if I particularly uh, want him to, to uh, stand out. So there we go. Now the background color will only be in effect if the character, if the, art, if the artwork has a transparent background. So watch what happens when I select that background and let's change it to something quite, quite obvious. Let's change it to some green grass behind him. You'll notice that it loads the texture up behind him. Now that's because the background of this particular artwork is transparent. If the background was not transparent, we would not see the uh, background being placed there, although technically it is still active, we just can't see it. Again, I generally don't go with textures for my backgrounds, I go to colour and I make it a very dark colour just to make the figure pop as much as possible. So now if we were to look at Jeff on the board, it's very clear that he is a monster and able and capable of moving around. Let's go back to our token now. We have our usual controls of mirror horizontal or mirror vertical. Again, those do exactly what we expect them to do. They rotate the figure around. Although this is something that um, you may not necessarily want to do or need to do, depending. If you select the token and you hold down the shift key, you can rotate that token around as you so like, as per normal controls for Dungeon Fog. And of course, if I hold down control shift, I can scale him up as I like. Again, going through those steps. Uh, one, two, and three, and so on. Now, I can make him above the walls, and I just need to move him around to reactivate him, but uh, he's now above the walls, so that means that when I place him over a wall, if I hold down the shift key, he's no longer locked to the grid, I could place him half and half. This is quite useful if I want him to be a ghost or a specter of some kind. Occasionally, you just need to move the token around until it actually registers where it is. So I'm going to let go of shift and now I can move him back to the grid. And I don't think we need him to be above the walls. Now he's casting a shadow at the moment. If I deselect that, there's not a huge difference uh, between uh, shadow and non-shadow. It really just depends on the map that you're using as to how extravagant that is. It's a subtle effect. Again, your choice as to whether to engage that or not. He is concealable. If I select that, you'll notice that he ghosts out a little bit. That means that when we're sharing this map using the uh, virtual view, of Dungeon Fog, the players will not see this token even if they enter into this room. Only once you've selected the token and select unconceal or basically reveal, the token will then pop to life and scare the hell out of the players. Well, at least that's what we're hoping. 
Then we have, of course, Enable Sight. Now, this is an interesting one, and it does require us to actually have illumination within our map already. I'm going to go and make the stage room a little bit darker. I'll show you how to do this in another tutorial later on so that you can see what's going on. So let's say that our room is quite dark. I'm going to enable sight on the token and it's in squares. So this is the number of squares. So I'm going to say one square and press the enter button. And what this does is that means that he will only be seeing one square around him as he moves around. So that can be quite, quite useful when we are trying to effectively uh, show how much the character can see or can't see. And more of this when we go to the virtual viewer of Dungeon Fox. I'm going to set that back. I'm going to disable that. And then, of course, we have our snap to grid option. We can select that so that we can freeform move him wherever we like, or we can reselect it and it will snap him to the grid. Again, if I hold down the shift key, I can move them around freely. It temporarily disables the snap to grid function. If I let go of the shift key, he snaps back to grid. If I want to change his portrait, that's the uh, most important thing. Or if I want to make another token, I simply click on the token option. And uh, now notice that because I was changing Jeff's values on his actual token, my border and background have uh, defaulted to a texture. Let's change the image of Jeff now. So this is not Jeff. This is his brother, Clem. Let's say he's a zombie in arms. And so all I do is left click on the image and that's going to bring up all of the tokens that uh, Dungeon Fog ships with. There are just hundreds of options here uh, of various different styles as well. So uh, we could choose any one of these. I'm just literally left clicking on them and choosing them as I go. Now, interestingly enough, you'll notice that, say, for example, this one, the background is not transparent. So we are not going to see whatever we do here. We won't see that happening in the background, which is as I was saying to you earlier. So this Clem is also going to be an evil villain. So I'm going to give him a red token and now I can drop him onto the board wherever I so choose. And there he is. One last thing, whilst we're looking at the portraits of the tokens, you can load up your own. Again, we have this drop down option, which allows us to go to my uploads. And you'll see I've created a whole lot of my own tokens for my player characters and the like. And uh, you can then select one of those or you simply default back to the Dungeon Fog option. And that, in short, is how you create your tokens.